Hi everyone, I'm Chef Suzy with Escafie Online. And this morning we're going to be exploring the French macaroon. Super classic little handheld cookies. So elegant. You see these everywhere in Paris in a variety of different colors. They're really easy to make. Just a few ingredients for the mixture. You only need about four ingredients. And then the fillings are endless, whatever flavors you desire. So let's go ahead and get started with our batter, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some flavors and fillings. Okay, so in this, um, in my food processor, I have my confectioner sugar and my powdered almonds or my almond meal. If you don't have access to powdered almonds or almond meal, you can always make your own in a food processor. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pulse these two ingredients for about five minutes. It's gonna blend them very fine. It's better for the macaroon, it absorbs better, and it's better for the rice. So I've already started pulsing these so we wouldn't have to pulse them for five minutes. So let's go ahead and do this just a little bit more. You will see that they're going to come together. It's going to become much finer. And it's definitely ready to go because, like I said, I started it ahead of time for us. So then you're just going to take this off, and then you're going to strain the whole mixture. You're going to sift it with your sifter. Be careful with these blades. They're very sharp. I'm just going to take this off and set this aside. So these are our... Um, First two ingredients. After we sift these together, we're gonna go ahead and whip our egg whites and our granulated sugar, and then we'll be well on our way. And please do let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so this became nice and powdery. I've got my little sifter in my bowl. And I'm just sifting this right into the bowl because once we whip the egg whites and sugar, we're going to be folding them into this mixture. So it's super easy to do. So we're just going to whip the egg whites and the sugar together on the mixer. There are a few versions of this macaroon. You can also make an Italian meringue, but this is the most simple version. And I definitely recommend trying this out. Don't be intimidated. These can be a little temperamental to make in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine and you'll just really love the results. I have a little bit of static there too. It's a little dry here in the Midwest with all the cold weather. Okay, so now we sift this. I'm gonna get out all of those little almond pieces and be sure to let me know if you have any questions. And like I said, don't be intimidated by these little cookies. Just dive in and make them. You can make them a few times until you get them absolutely right. And please let me know if you have any questions or if I can be of any help along the way. So typically you'll see these cookies everywhere in Paris and France in a variety of different colors. And the color is usually an indication of what the filling is. So a lot of times the cookie itself is not flavored, although you could put a little bit of extract in it. And the flavor really comes with the filling. So there's just so many things. Like for example, we're gonna be making a pink macaroon today and then we're gonna be filling that with some strawberry filling. And oftentimes you'll see um, green, which is filled with pistachio filling. You'll see yellow, which is filled with mango, or even orange that's filled with an orange filling or an apricot. So please have fun exploring your macaroons. Make a variety of colors. You could even make a violet or a purple and fill it with a nice raspberry filling or even a blueberry filling. So definitely have lots of fun exploring these um, macaroons. Once you get the hang of this, you'll see how simple the recipe is and how easy they are to make. You're just gonna be making your mixture and then you'll be piping them out and you'll be baking them at kind of a low temperature. So please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so now we're gonna set this mixture aside we're going to go ahead and whip our egg whites. And we will be posting the recipe so it'll be there for you when you're ready. So what we're 
we're going to do is we're going to whip the egg whites to kind of a soft peak. Then we're going to add our granulated sugar and then we'll go ahead and whip them to a firm peak. And then we're going to fold them right into our confectioner sugar and our almond mixture. So there's really not a lot of sugar in these cookies. There's only about maybe an, um, 1.6 ounces that we're going to be adding to the egg whites. So it's not super sweet, but um, just enough sweetness and it kind of helps with the crust on the top too. And like I said, the filling is where you really get your flavor. And I also am going to be giving you a recipe for our chocolate macaroon, which just has a little bit of a variation. You're going to be adding some cocoa powder and you're going to be pulsing that with the almonds and the confectioner sugar in the beginning. I like to use the duck processed cocoa because it's much darker, it's richer looking, but you can go ahead and use the natural cocoa powder too. Okay, so we've got our egg whites to a soft peak. We're going to go ahead and add our granulated sugar and then we're going to whip them to a firm peak. And please let me know if you have any questions. We have a question. The question is, is are the fruit fillings coolies? They're usually a preserved filling because the coolies are more sauce fillings and they're um, much more liquidy. You want something that's going to hold its shape. You want to use either a jam or a preserved filling. You can also use a flavored buttercream and you can color it the same color as the cookie or you can even use a ganache or maybe a hazelnut paste. So please have lots of fun with your fillings and explore them. Let me know what you come up with. Okay, so now that our egg whites have come to a firm peak, this is the perfect time to add any color if you're going to be adding it. I'm going to be adding a little bit of red color to make my cookies pink. You can add green, purple, yellow, orange, whatever you like. So let's go ahead and we'll add a drop. I like to add my food coloring when my mixer's off just in case there's a mishap and too much comes in. You can spoon it out before it mixes in. If the mixer's on, it's gone. It's already mixing in. So let's go ahead and see if this is the color that we wanted. I just put one drop in. I'm using a liquid color. You can also use gels or liquid paste, whatever you like. Keep in mind those are a little bit stronger. I'm going to go ahead and add another droplet. These really don't brown much in the oven, so you're really going to have your color, which is very true. Okay, so we have a nice pink. You can make your colors these pastel colors, or you can make them a little more bold to whichever you like. Okay, so now that our egg whites and our sugar are whipped and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and fold them into our dry ingredients. And please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so we've got our dry ingredients, our confectioner sugar and our almond powder. Remember, if you're doing the chocolate version, you're gonna have the cocoa powder in here too. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the egg whites into this dry mixture a little bit at a time. Kind of start out with a half or one third, whatever works for you and you're just gonna be gently folding. Okay, so this is key to these cookies. You don't want to push too much air out of this mixture, otherwise your cookies will become very flat. They're going to inflate a little bit in the oven because of the air that's whipped into the mixture with the egg whites, and the reason that we're doing a little bit at a time is they are deflating a little bit as we're mixing. So it's kind of only natural, but you want to be as gentle as you can, folding from the bottom to the top. And then we'll go ahead and add the rest of that light and airy mixture to kind of finish this off a little bit. So like I said, don't be intimidated by these little cookies. They're so cute. They're delicious. They're just exquisite and elegant and you'll be sure to impress your friends and family if you make these, especially in a variety of colors. Okay, so our mixture's kind of well on its way. We're gonna go ahead and fold the rest of this egg white mixture in. 
And you're only going to mix until it's just mixed. Like right after you see any of that streaking, that's when you're going to stop your mixing. Because you definitely don't want to over mix this, otherwise you're going to end up with some flat cookies. Which they still taste delicious, but we want them to puff up a little bit through the sandwiching together. I am very carefully folding this through. As you can see, it still has a lot of thickness to it. And please let me know if you have any questions. This is a nice small mixture. Once we pipe these out, we're going to bake these at about 320 degrees for about 15 to 25 minutes. You're going to be keeping an eye on these carefully when they're in the oven. I don't recommend opening the door, especially not slamming the door because they're inflating and they can easily fall. I do recommend just turning your oven light on and peeking on the inside and you'll see them inflate. And they may deflate a little bit, but they shouldn't go completely flat because that's when you're going to get some of that footing, which a little bit is okay. It just kind of shows the classic style of the macaroon, but you really don't want any widespread footing. Okay, so the mixture is not going to be completely smooth, so keep that in mind. This is just mixed, just finished, and any of this lumping that you're seeing is just actually going to disappear once these cookies sit a little bit. So let's go ahead and fill our pastry bag and then we'll start our piping. Okay, so I have my pastry bag with a small round tip. You can even use a bag that you cut the end, but I don't recommend going too much larger than this. So we're gonna go ahead and fill our bag. I just have it folded over the mixture is thick, so it's not going to seep out. So you can just fold it over and put it right in. And like I said, you can make this a bolder color if you like, or really any color that you like that's going to match your filling. Okay, so we've got our mixture in our bag, and we're going to go ahead and start our piping. And this isn't something that you want to walk away from. You want to complete this as you start it because the mixture is going to deflate. You've got all this air whipped in. Okay, so you're going to pipe your cookies either on a sill pad or a parchment on your tray. I recommend the sill pad because the parchment can come up a little bit, but that's fine too. If it's coming up, you can kind of tack down the corners with some of the mix. So we're just going to be piping some nice round discs that are about an inch and a half wide. They're going to spread a little bit as they sit. And I recommend, if you're really not sure, go a little bit smaller because they bake better smaller. The larger cookies don't bake as well sometimes. So I'm just very carefully piping and these are going to spread a little bit, so leave a little space in between. And do we have any questions on anything? We have a question. What will happen in the baking, in the baking of the cookies if the egg whites are not whipped to hold the heat? The question is, what will happen in the baking of the cookies if the egg whites are not whipped all the way? You won't have enough air and they're going to spread and they will deflate. So the air is going to help these puff up a little bit and give them their nice domed shape. So no worries if they're not perfect. I recommend just going ahead and exploring the cookies. You won't be disappointed. Okay, so we have our cookies that are piped to about an inch and a half each. And they've got some separation because they're going to spread a little bit. What you're going to want to do is leave these sit at room temperature for maybe 10 to 15 minutes before putting them in the oven. Super important step in making this cookie. That's going to help 
form that crust on the outside that gives it its classic dome, its nice smooth shape. And if you have a little bit of these peaks on top, you can just go ahead and smooth them out. But as these cookies sit for 10 or 15 minutes, they're just gonna kind of smooth out on their own. So don't forget this step and don't be in a hurry because this is gonna give it that classic domed crust. Then these are gonna go in the oven for about 320 degrees for 15 to 25 minutes. Keep an eye on them through the oven window, turn your light on. They're gonna be a little bit flat like this in the beginning and then they're gonna puff up a little bit and you may have a little bit of an edge around the side and that's okay. Sometimes you have more of that and sometimes you have a little bit less. So they're gonna puff up a little bit and then they're gonna start drying and cooking. And the best way to test the cookie is um, to gently place your finger on top and if you move it back and forth, if it moves back and forth freely and doesn't feel set at all, you know that the cookies need a little bit more time. So try one of your corner cookies, kind of open your door carefully and stick your hand, um, open it all the way and kind of pull the tray out, being careful not to jiggle it too much and then kind of stick your hand and just touch one of the cookies on top and see how much it moves. So. If it's moving a lot, put it back in and then test it again in a couple minutes and you'll see a big difference. So once you become comfortable with these, you'll really know when they're done. And what I like to do when my cookies are done, I'll open the oven door, I'll turn the oven off and then I'll let them cool in the oven. For me, it just helps the drying a little bit. So I recommend that little trick or you can take them out and if you feel like they're not dry enough, you can always dry them a little bit more. But um, definitely explore the cookies. You're gonna love them. Super easy to make. I made them here quickly today. So let's go ahead and fill some of the cookies that I made earlier. Okay, so I've got my pink cookies that I made earlier. They had just a little bit of browning on them, but really not too much. You just want them to keep their classic color. And what you're gonna do is sandwich these cookies together. So I've got a little bit of strawberry preserve to match with my pink color. And we're just gonna go ahead and do some sandwiching. Like I said, you can use some buttercream or you can use ganache, whatever you like. And the filling really tells what the cookie is. And please let me know if you have any questions. And we have another question. The question is, is, um, is there a macaroon cookie sheet that you can purchase? There is a macaroon cookie sheet that's made especially for baking macaroons and there are some walls and that keeps your macaroon perfect in size and shape. That's a good thing to buy if you first start making macaroons, but you're also okay doing this right on the sheet pan. So you can order those online, just Google it. And if you need any help finding one, be sure to let me know. What's nice about just kind of freely piping these on a cookie sheet or a half sheet pan like I have here is you can make more. If you're using the mold, you'll have to buy more mold. So it really depends on your use. But I highly recommend becoming comfortable with this technique and then this way you won't be limited to your pan. Okay, so let's go ahead and sandwich some of these cookies together. I just turned some over, I put the filling in and as you can see, they're super beautiful little sandwich treat. And you'll be sure to impress your friends and family if you make these. So I try to put kind of like sizes together. I don't want to put any cookies that are too big together so they look a little bit more matched. So please let me know if you have any questions. Give me a call or send me a message. I'd love to help you with your classic French macaroons. And we have another question. Um, what about baking these in the convection oven? What do you recommend? Okay. The question is about baking the cookies in the convection oven. 
You have to be careful with the convection oven because the temperature is a little bit warmer. So what you're going to want to do is reduce the temperature by, three, uh, by about 25 degrees. And you're going to have the fan blowing, so you're going to have to watch for some brownness because the fan helps with the browning. So I do recommend maybe the first time you make them to turn the fan off, and then you kind of you can kind of explore from there. Definitely lower your temperature a little bit. If you find that your cookies are splitting on the top, that's typically a sign that the cookie was piped too large or the oven was too hot. So go ahead and lower your oven, or sometimes too, if you're baking in a gas oven, the heat's coming from the bottom, and you may notice some of your cookies on the lower shelf having some splitting on them. That's because it's a little too warm down there, and they're cooking a little bit too much on top first, and then the filling or the mixture, um, the batter, or the, um, the, the dough is like coming out a little bit through those cracks. So that's a telltale sign of being too warm. So move them to a higher rack or lower your oven. So we've got our finished macaroons. I also have a chocolate macaroon. Try these, you'll love them. I've included a recipe and you can serve your macaroons either with a little shot of milk or even a shot of maybe amaretto or some Baileys. So have fun exploring your macaroons. Please let me know how you're doing and how you're enjoying your macaroons. So thank you so much for joining me today. And please, if you have any questions, be sure to be in touch. I would love to help you with your classic French macaroons. And sometimes they can be a little slippery to plate, and they look perfect in boxes too for gifts. So we'll see you next time. Have a great day.